Uh, this guy is called the Standing Streamer. with regret and you're watching putting you over hello everybody i am l stander lucha libre streamer and welcome to uh la putting you over i think Oh, all right. Let's get over to our guest. Once she connects to her audio, I'll give her that time. Uh, is it connected? Yeah, you're good. You're good, and we're live. Look at that. All right. Look at that transition. <laughs> How are you uh, doing on this fine, uh, whatever night it is? This pandemic's got me lost. This Tuesday night. Right. <laughs> I think it's a Tuesday. I, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm doing great. So uh, just had a physical and getting some pizza and heading back home. No, oh, so. jeez, <laughs> I could go for some pizza. We're di- yeah. I, uh, we eat a lot of pizza here lately. It's easiest, but I think I had some on Sunday. Um, in your physical, I assume is for uh, what you got going down this weekend, right? It's this weekend, right, Vanessa? Yes. Yes. So I would assume. Did she freeze on us? She froze on us. Well, I, I'll answer for her. So no, 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 no. Oh, uh, yeah, it's, it's for if I do freeze on you, I'm sorry. Oh, um, it's okay. Yeah, it's for physical. Uh, I mean, it's weekend um, to get licensing and stuff for different states to wrestle. Uh, some states have a commission and you get blood work and physical done so that um, you can wrestle in the state. So I'm set. Right. I'm good to go. You're good to go. And uh, we'll definitely touch on that match because I believe one of your opponents for the Jerry Lawler 50th anniversary is somebody we've had on this show twice. And uh, so we'll definitely get to that. But you are now, I believe, Vanessa, this will be our third, second generation. Well, I guess fourth, if you count the the Von Erich brothers, both of them, and Pillman. So our fourth, second generation wrestler on the show, and we couldn't be more prouder. Um, Your father, Terry Bam Bam Gordy from the Freebirds, um, so growing, growing up, um, was, what was it like growing up with somebody of that stature, not only physical stature, but that stature in the wrestling business? Um, I, to me, he was just a dad, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, I didn't see him as like a hall of fame or anything. Um, mm-hmm. obviously he didn't back then, but. He was just the guy that picked me up from school and was there and did dad stuff. So, uh, I mean, it was cool having a, a dad that was a wrestler. All, all my friends, you know, couldn't wait to meet him and stuff. But um, to me, he was just a dad. Did he take you to, like, birthday parties? Like, I could see him walking into, like, a, know, like a roller skating pizza party and <laughs> putting on skates. Did he, did he do those type of things? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I have a, a good memory of one time, it was uh, during the summer, 
he took my sister, I have a younger sister, and I uh, to like the skate rink and he skated, he did pretty well. I think he only fell like once. It was a big fall. Yeah. Really happened. You know, it was a big old giant falling down. But yeah, he we don't he took us fishing. Uh he taught me how to ride a bike without training wheels. Oh. All the all the dad stuff. Yeah. Awesome. That's awesome stuff. Um yeah. now you you've been I think this past August, um, if I'm correct, probably was your two year in ring anniversary. I think you've been been uh in the biz, I guess, uh working wise for about two years or so. Uh so I started in the business about two years ago. Um actually in ring experience having matches a little over a year. Okay. And um so what what I mean to me I always assumed the children of the people I watched wrestling uh, were just always going to be gung-ho. This is what I'm going to do. Uh, th- I'm following in their footsteps. What, what took you so long, I guess, to, to come around to go into this? Um, just, it, it wasn't, I, I liked it as a kid kind of fell out of it as I got older. Obviously my dad passed when I was 11. So uh, I just didn't think that that would be, you know, the route that I would take. And I was into like animals. So I kind of wanted to like either gear myself towards animals. And I got a little bit older and um, I found psychology and I actually went to college doing that. So wrestling wasn't a thing. Like it was my dad thing, brother's thing. I have a cousin did it just wasn't mine and uh growing up you know women were it was kind of more tna it was like the you know the divas and stuff like you had stable which i loved i thought she was just absolutely gorgeous and i looked up to her as a kid but i was that type of girl you know so i was like this just isn't for me um now we have the women evolution stuff going on and women are being seen as equals and athletes and so i think i'm getting a, a like a great time yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, I'm a father of three daughters. Vanessa is a mother of two. And uh, it's it's like my daughters love watching wrestling with me. And I'm ha- I'm proud to show them the women wrestlers today. Yourself, uh, Tessa Blanchard, uh, Allison Kay, uh, Thunder Rosa. Um, I, I'm just honored that, th- that they get to grow up with this type of portrayal for women wrestling as opposed to nothing against those women. They had their purpose then, but anyways, but you mentioned something uh, that I, I just wanted to, to say quickly when I was researching for you, I never realized that your brother uh, was Jesse from uh, Festus and Jesse in the WWA. It didn't even uh, occur to me. And uh, so that, that's cool. Is he, he's still, in, he's a lot older than you, I would think. He is 10 years older than me, um, but uh, he does not wrestle anymore. He's actually a police officer. Uh, so, yeah. um, you know, after he left the WWE, he did the Jesse and Festus thing, and yeah. he left around uh, 2010, and uh, and he became a police officer, like flying drug task force. So, uh, you know, some, some pretty cool stuff yeah. he does now. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, do you guys ever just like talk shop about wrestling? Does he, I'm sure he gives you tips and he's big help now. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, I talked to him and I talked to Michael. Um, you know, Michael was like uh, a dad, you know, replacement, I guess, or not replaced, but, uh, yeah. did what he could as yeah. like a godparent. Um, but yeah, n- now that I'm in wrestling, like my brother and I are super close and, uh, closer than ever. Um, and he'll help me, like I'll send him matches and, uh, I actually plan on going down, um, next month and maybe just hanging out with him and doing some training and stuff just, just to do it, you know? Yeah. Um, before we get off of, um, we, we get onto your training and, and all, what you're doing in the ring. Um, I just, I have to know, has, um, Mr. Uh, has Michael P.S. Hayes uh, replaced you and your sister's boogie board yet? 
uh, uh, he is not, you know, I'm, I Shame on stay him. on him every once in a while. I'm like, you still haven't gotten us a boogie board. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'll remind him, uh, when I see him again, you know, um, we, we have a question in the chat that's going to help us transition well to your in-ring work. And it comes from, uh, Bob and he wants to know, uh, cause you mentioned psychology. Uh, you got into that and he's wondering if your uh, background in psychology plays into your in-ring style and how you put together a match. Um, so when I say psychology, I mean like mental health. Okay. Um, so like, like a counselor or psychiatrist, um, which I'm sure in some, you know, instances it could go hand in, but uh, as far as like in-ring psychology, I learned all that in training, you know, and, and uh, still learning it, still perfecting it. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a different psychology. <laughs> different type. Um, you mentioned training and how you're always learning, always picking up something new. Who uh, got your foot in the door as far as training goes, and who are the some some of the people that you're still working with now, training with? Um, so my main trainer, uh, his name is Knight Davis, and he ran XCW out of Denton, Texas, and I trained with him uh, for about nine or ten months, um, and I also had uh, some help training by Tom Howard. Tom Howard. Uh, train Jack Black for Nacho Libre. He's trained, helped train people like Samoa Joe and John Cena. Um, he had a, a really good career. Um, he did like a Green Beret type gimmick and then a surfer gimmick. Oh. Um, right now, I actually train uh, with my boyfriend, Craig Teesman. He has a ring and he's just like fine tuning everything that I've learned so far. Excellent. Um, now, I... I was learned about you. You traveled over to, you did some work in Japan. You went over there and worked. And now your father, um, was, was big in Japan. The, uh, they loved his style, his look. Uh, I believe he was tag teaming with Stan Hansen then. Um, wh what was the experience like for you in Japan? And did it, uh, like expand your, grasp of basically the impact that the Freebirds and your dad in, in, in specifically in Japan had on this on this business oh yeah I mean so my dad when I was a kid uh you know I grew up with the all Japan stuff yeah I remember my dad teaming with Dr. Death and Stan Hansen and stuff like that and uh so to be able to go over there and and just kind of be in the middle of of you know, uh, I guess the legacy that he made over there and like the people obviously still remember and they treated me like, you know, royalty too, yeah. like, because I, I'm his daughter. So it was just like a really, really touching experience and obviously getting to wrestle over there. It's a lot of people's dreams and I got to do it early on and I hope to go back, but yeah, it, it, it was pretty amazing. Uh, going around with people and they're like, I saw your dad wrestle there. I saw your dad wrestle there. You know, I remember watching your dad do this and they like people brought magazines and stuff for me to see or, or pictures that they took at shows, you know? And, and so I, I really loved it. It was really awesome. Yeah. It's uh, it definitely has a nice special place uh, in wrestling. Uh, you know, uh, in the history of wrestling, we were talking to Ross and Marshall the Von Erics on here and they had a great story. They were over in Japan and they weren't quite sure if that's what they still wanted to do and, and all this. And they told a story about how before one of their matches, they like to get away and they went up in the rafters and get their minds right. And they went to sign their names up on, on the wall or something. They signed them. And then when they were leaving, they noticed, uh, well, their father's signature and then, uh, their uncles. So it was Kevin and David signed there. And it was just like, it blew their mind that they were over there in Japan and it just like made their eyes open basically to the impact that their family had, uh, which, you know, your father had that same type of impact over there as well. But, um, Oh yeah. yeah. I love it. And it, it's like, 
you know, something that a lot of people just won't get to experience, you know, and, and, but it's special, you know, even if it's a little, as much as just like a signature, yeah, you know, yeah. and it just means the world to people like me or like, I'm sure Brian Pillman, every time yeah. he finds even the smallest thing that most people would just overlook, uh, you know, it, it probably means the world to him. And the same with the Von Eric boys and uh, anybody else, Tessa, or even, you know, they still have, you know, their fathers and stuff, but uh, I'm sure it all means so much to them when they get to experience it. I watched um, several of your matches to prepare and, uh, or get familiar with you. And now your last name, Gordy, I'm sure that helps you get your foot in the door uh, people want to bring you in, want to bring that free bird in, uh, that that bad street beauty in because of the name. But your in ring work uh, keeps you in the ring, keeps you coming to the places. Uh, how would you describe your style if for the people out there or on YouTube when we push it out there, they've never seen you? Uh, how would you describe Miranda Gordy's style in the ring? Um, I try to emulate my dad. Think of female version, Terry Gordy. Uh, I just so happen to be bigger than, uh, than most of the girls that I face. So, um, I can do that. I can absolutely be the big, you know, bully brawler yeah. to, uh, to my opponent. And that's the style that I try to emulate, uh, in my matches. Yeah. I saw, uh, I saw one a match with you and Jordan Grace. She's got that same powerhouse uh, stature. I wouldn't want to be anywhere near the one of you guys in the ring. And uh, that was a hell of a match. Yeah, oh, gosh, I can't remember where it was now. But uh, I did get eyes on that. Um, yeah, that's good stuff. So f what I gathered is you're mostly a face. Um, you did get to be heel one time, and that was in Japan. Um, would you prefer to be a heel? Or prefer to be a face? Uh, well, I mean, I've, like you said, I've hardly been here. Yeah. Um, you know, hopefully soon I get a little practice in. Um, you know, make a big hill turn. I, I like being face. I love having the crowd, you know, root me on and I beat up the bad guy. So uh, I enjoy it. Uh, you know, I think... Maybe soon I'll uh, get to uh, show show a mean side of me. Nasty side. Maybe this this yeah. Saturday. Maybe this Saturday. Um, it's it's this. Maybe is I it... mean it's uh you know two champs, so we'll see. <laughs> yeah right. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It's is it so so this week. So let's just move to that. So this weekend, uh, you're wrestling Thunder Rosa, correct? Correct. And um, that's at Jerry Lawler's 50th. Help me out, Vanessa. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's it's his 50th something anniversary. Where did my link go? I forgot. it. But you're taking on Thunder Rosa. Now, I just saw uh, the NWA Women's Champ tweet something out. Uh, and I'm paraphrasing here. She said she's traveled from Dallas to here, back to here, wrestled this, done this. And... Uh, Basically ended it with saying um, she hasn't gotten enough sleep. But who needs sleep is what she said. Um, is she going to be too exhausted to even stand in the same ring as you? Oh, I, I mean, Thunderous is a good opponent. I'm looking forward to the match. Um, she is a great competitor. She's someone that I have looked up to and uh, – uh, since I started, you know, back when I was just getting the business and stuff, because she was on the Texas scene yep. and I was starting to get in the show and stuff. Um, however, uh, she should probably take a nice long nap and rest up for the match. So, because I'm going to bring it, you know, I'll be well rested and I'm working out every day and everything. So, uh, you know, yeah. hopefully, hopefully she brings it. I want her to bring it. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I, I think I, I, I never like asking the question, where do you see yourself? What are your goals? Um, but I, I'll ask it to you like this. Um, 
I, I think you have a ton of potential, not only because you have your last name Gordy, but because of your in ring work and and the way your look is is what appeals to me. I like that that strong powerhouse, that China, uh Jordan Grace type look, Beth Phoenix um in the ring. Uh which promotion? Let's take uh we'll take like the WWE and AEW, NWA, uh, MLW those promotions which one would you see yourself fitting best? Um, you know, every time I, I get asked this, obviously uh, the WWE is the top. Um, you know, I, I have family there uh, that I think the best all around, you know, would be WWE. But I think that I could see myself anywhere. I would absolutely take uh any show in japan because yeah. because it was just so cool over there and it's so different i would take any show over there uh sign me a contract to a house show i totally do <laughs> um but aw on the rise too so yeah. i think that um i could see myself have a great schedule they have a lot of uh, indie people coming up and they're helping them make their name and so I, I, they're doing good things so i think that i could just blend in here yeah. Honestly, yeah. but I thought if I had to, we'll say WWE. Yeah. Um, I was thinking the first thing that came to my mind um was MLW, and that's because the Von Erics are there, and uh, Pillman's there as well, but they don't really have a women's division. Smith Junior. Uh, what'd you say? Smith Junior. Smith Junior. That's right, and every Laparka, um, yeah. the Los Parks, but they don't have a women's a women's uh division as far as i know um so... they were working on it and then COVID hit mm, damn pandemic ah. oh, get this again uh impact someone brings up in the chat impact would be good i that would be good because their their women's division is right up there right now with uh nxt slash oh yeah they have, they have a pretty good women's division impact does yeah uh yeah i mean i would totally work for mlw i know that they have they have the von eric boys and stuff and uh that would be a great company too but impacts uh women roster is doing pretty well so like i said i mean yeah. Yeah. there's there's not like a specific one I'd be happy to do any of it really for sure um we uh we we were mentioned the the pandemic there for a quick second. Um, oh, Bob, Bob in the chat wants more of you versus Jordan Grace. That that would be a nice <laughs> little feud. Um, during this pandemic, I I like this question a lot. Um, because it it brings a silver lining, I guess, to the crap. But um, have you learned any new talents? during uh the pandemic that you can use in the ring or out of the ring or anything um so i never really stopped uh with the wrestling oh, that's as soon cool. as everything shut down yeah. i yeah I, I think we gave it like two weeks and uh like i said my boyfriend uh, and where i'm living now uh we have a wrestling ring set oh. up 24 7 there you go. uh and you know we had some friends that uh you know, uh, I guess they, they just didn't care. They liked wrestling over, you know, uh, the pandemic and they came up and we started filming a little show and we called it viral pro and Ooh. put it out for pay-per-view and yeah. So, uh, we, we did a whole show. Um, and it's just kind of, you know, to, to get our feet wet, we did a whole show of seven people. There you go. We were under the limit, you know, uh, of, uh, you know, that they, yeah. that the CDC, I recommended which was 10 people at the time and so we did it with like seven people cameraman and all and uh you know it it's not uh WWE production but i think it's definitely entertaining so we did that while everything was shut down and so so we never really stopped so i think that um and it's helped me improve just like the studio style stuff yeah, yeah. it helped me my in ring abilities so i guess i guess you could say that <laughs> yeah well you put on a, you put on an entire show pay-per-view so you you did the booking the writing uh filming uh editing uploading 
there, there's stuff. There's stuff you've learned. Um, I've learned Maybe. some, yeah. <laughs> something, uh, unique about you and different talent outside of the wrestling genre. And I know, uh, Vanessa is going to enjoy this, but you are big into horses, horse, horses, horsey, horse. You're big yeah. into horses. Uh, yeah, hor- horses, yeah. Horses. Um, um, yeah, so before I started uh, wrestling, I was into uh, rescuing horses. Uh, a lot of people don't know that um, horses, kind of like dogs and cats, get discarded into uh, places that um, you can either buy them or they get shipped to uh, the border, like Mexico, and uh, they go to, like, slaughterhouses, oh. basically. And so... Um, yeah, I know it's uh, and people don't know that. People think that oh, everybody loves horses. Horses are beautiful, but no, they're just like you know, cats or dogs or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, I lived on a ranch, and we had the ability to rescue some horses and rehabilitate them and uh, put them in good homes. And so that's what I was doing before wrestling came along. <laughs> so you're a rancher. I just have one horse though. Now. Just one. Yeah, uh, not a working ranch, just horses, oh. a couple cows. That's really it. Some chicken. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are they? Are these like um, any like uh, you know, the racetrack horses? Like when they're when they're done, I know that uh, like the horses when when they're at the racetrack, people bet on them. When they're finally done with their career and no longer useful, I'm sure. Uh, people discard of them at least that that would be my assumption but that's awesome Rescue. yeah that's that is exactly what happened and uh the horse that i have like my personal horse is actually an off the track thoroughbred uh she spent like seven years racing and of course they get older and they don't move as well um she she's bid on by someone at an auction like they auction them off and uh they can breed them and so she became a brood mare and oh. uh she had a, a foal it didn't make it and so i got her i rescued her because the person was just trying to get rid of her didn't want to pay for her anymore didn't want to you know just like you see ads for dogs like just can't take the dog anymore so this person was discarding this horse and uh, she turned out to be a healthy loving like super smart horse that i got just because no one you don't want to do anything and and like she had a great career she's like a hundred sixty thousand dollar racehorse you know she yeah. she won that kind of money during her her uh, career as a racehorse um a lot of them though uh in texas they're like rodeo horses and they'll breed and they'll breed them uh until they get either the right shape that they want them or the right look or uh whatever discipline they're in it like roping or uh you know driving the cows and stuff and uh, if they just don't make the cut, you know, uh, they they get sent off to the to the kill pens. Oh. So uh, a lot of a lot of cow horses, a lot of quarter horses. So yeah, it's sad. It is sad. I did what I could. Yeah. Um, it's it's an expensive uh, hobby, <laughs> yeah. I guess if you'd call it that. Yeah, that's exactly. I'm the stables that we have our daughter going to right now. She's learning to ride ponies right now first. And that's all of their ponies and horses are rescues from different places all over. And they've rescued a lot from the Kentucky area. Yeah, I can imagine. Oh, yeah. All racehorses probably. See, Texas, they have the the cow horses. So uh, they'll breed, you know, the quarter horses um, until they find the one that they like. The rest just go to slaughter. And it's it's unfortunate. I'm sure it happens, like, for racehorses in Kentucky. So... And anywhere else that where there's a certain discipline for a horse, it's it's sad. Well, <laughs> it makes yeah my heart sad. What's a so, cow, what's a cow horse? Uh, horses that work with cows. So like uh, different uh, disciplines, all the rodeo stuff, roping, cutting. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got gotcha. you. Um. Anyways, Miranda, um, before before uh, we let you go here, because uh, I know you you, you want to get to that pizza. I, I don't know about you. I want to get to pizza now. But um, 
before we let you go, what we do at the end of every show is I'm going to give you a mic now. You can put over anything you want. You let us know about your, your match coming up this weekend uh, and how you're going to give one of those classic Gordy clotheslines uh, to Miss Thunder Rosa. Um, the floor is yours. Okay, yeah. I'm going to obviously pull the classic clothesline. I'm going to give Thunder Rosa a big bam, bam, slam. I I hope she took a nap. Um, she's ready for it because I'm bringing it. Uh, especially as Jerry Lawler's 50th uh, wrestling anniversary, so uh, a lot of big names are gonna be there. So we're gonna we're gonna show out, show up and show out is what we're gonna do. Um, you know anything uh, if you want to find me on social media, all under Gordy Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, I'm easy to find. Yeah. Pro Wrestling Tees, Gordy. Uh, she's got the, the Bad Street Beauty shirt, yeah, pro which wrestling. is good. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else I'm forgetting. <laughs> yeah. um, is there yeah. any place we can watch the matches this weekend online? Um, I know they are not live streaming it. Okay. Uh, they possibly could. And, of course, if I uh, – if I find out that they're going to put it on YouTube or anything later on, I'll absolutely post it. Cause I know the whole show is going to be great. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, once I, uh, figure out what they're going to do with it, uh, like film cart, I'll absolutely let you know. And I'll, I'll post it, put it on my Twitter, Facebook and everything. Awesome. Awesome. Well, it's been a pleasure to have you on tonight. Um, and we appreciate the time and good luck this weekend. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Anytime. Have a great night. You too. Bye-bye. Awesome. Awesome. Oh. Uh, this guy is called the Standing Streamer. <laughs>